Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're back here at Team Toyota of Princeton for this all new, brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. This is the 1958 edition, murdered out. We have black exterior paint, black cloth interior. We have dark graphite wheels. We have the iForce Max engine. We got a lot of action going on in this 1958 edition. 1958 edition meaning Back to basics, according to Toyota Media, back to the homage to the original FJ25 Land Cruiser. So let's dig in. Front end of our 1958 edition Land Cruiser. Again, all black, flat black on the front grille. Love the combo. Moving on in, we're full LED spread of lights up front, including the fog lamps, functional side air curtains, the old school Toyota in block lettering on the front grille, looking good. See those fender flares coming out over the wheels? Cover those up, flat black around the wheel well, set up for off-road duty. Now, when we're looking at our wheel and tire setup, we're looking at an 18-inch dark graphite machined aluminum alloy wheel, Toyota badge on the center cap. These wheels are wrapped in Yokohama Geolander all-season tires, 245 on the width, a 70-series sidewall, 18s, all four corners, four-wheel drive, Moving on out, we get the full picture of this rugged, off-road looking Land Cruiser. Let me know how you like this boxy shape and what Toyota did with the design on this. I think it looks really, really good. We're looking at 8.7 inches of ground clearance in case you're wondering. And of course, we have those Predator side steps to step up into the vehicle. Coming on in closer, we're going to come up to our side view mirrors and we're going to go flat black on the side view mirror, LED turn signals. We have color match front and rear door handles. Up top, we do have the optional roof rack, color matched roof, no sunroof. Back end of our Land Cruiser, the big boxy shape. We do have the wiper down below on the glass because we don't have much of a, a roof spoiler coming off the top. All black lettering on the back except for the iForce Max engine call out. Full LED spread of lighting in the back as well as your flat black on the rear bumper. Right in the middle of the rear bumper, that is going to cover up right now your tow hitch. We'll go over those numbers when we take a look at the engine. And then our exhaust is tucked up underneath the left side of the vehicle. Let me know what you think about the back. I'm really kind of digging it. We're under the hood of this 24 Land Cruiser. And what are we looking at for a power plant? We have Toyota's 2.4 liter i4 Max four-cylinder hybrid engine mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. 326 horsepower. 465 pound-feet of torque, up to 6,000 pounds towing capacity, MPGs, 22 in the city, 25 on the highway, 23 combined. Before we get into the interior, you're going to want to know the $64,000 question, how much? Well, it's not quite $64,000, but it ain't far off. So for a, an addition, that's back to basic homage to the FJ25. They certainly don't have a back to basics price. So let's check it out. Base price for the 24 Land Cruiser 1958 edition before options, 55,950. We got a lot of options on this vehicle. We'll go over those when we check out the window sticker. But once we add in the options and the destination and delivery, fee of $1,395 from Toyota's Hamura Tokyo Japan assembly plant, we have a total MSRP from the factory of $61,522. So let's check out the interior. Starting with the driver door panel, we'll zoom on in. And again, back to basics means back to hard black plastic all the way across the top and on the armrests. Now, I understand the theme is back to basics. I understand the th that, that if you're taking this off road, this is going to be easier to hose out if you get it all mucked up and dirty. So I get that, but we got to also keep the price of this vehicle in mind. Now, we have a black door handle, flat black on the switch gear, and we do have A power fold mirror. There we go. And you can set it on auto so they fold in when you lock the vehicle. We do have the Predator side steps, which you see 
Toyota putting on a lot of these. And then we have a nice large door pocket. We have our standard audio system in here. And then we swing on in. Nice large uh, dead pedal brake and accelerator. And we do have the off, uh, not the off-road, the all-season uh, floor mats in here. That's a Land Cruiser. Now, seating-wise, all manual adjustment for the driver and the front passenger with this black cloth material that feels soft, feels woven, feels nice. But let me know for the price point, are you expecting something a little bit more in the seats? Passenger door panel, same action as the driver, same material, same hard black plastic. Up on our dash, we do have some soft touch up here. Then we go hard black plastic into the Land Cruiser. We do have gloss black plastic on the heat and air vent. And then down below, a nice large glove box. All right. Infotainment system, what we have here is Toyota's 8-inch multimedia system. This is the latest generation. Wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, NAV built in, but it is a subscription service to get the NAV. We do have music right here. You get your Sirius XM as well as regular radio stations. Bluetooth, your phone. Vehicle settings. You can adjust your climate from here, front and rear. You can go back. You can do your trip information, get your vehicle alerts, and then you have your general settings where you can set up your driver profile. You can also get the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi hotspot from here with over-the-air updates. So it's a nice, easy system to use. We hit reverse, take a look at our backup camera, and we have the old backup camera in here with no trajectory, and it's kind of fuzzy. Really? Why don't we have the new camera in here, Toyota? What's going on here? You got to let me know. We have a volume knob right here, two cup holders, excuse me, cup holders, two heat and air vents. We have four way hazards. We have dual climate. We have three stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger and a heated steering wheel. So they got you covered there. Down further, we have three USB C's. And then we have an area to lie your phone, but we do not have a wireless charging pad. And that this would have been nice to have been rubberized because this is just plastic and things are going to slide around. Now, moving down further, here's the gear shift that's going to take you through this eight-speed automatic transmission. We have our electric emergency brake, auto vehicle hold on or off, drive modes, which we'll check out when we go through the dash, ECT second, which means I want to start out in second gear. So let's say I'm off road. I want to limit the torque so I don't spin the wheels. I want to start off in second gear. We're going to hit that button. Then we have our hill descent control, crawl control right here. Down further, we do have traction control off. We can lock the both diff, center diff. We can lock the rear. And then we have high four, low four right here. Two cup holders. Toyota key fob right here, pretty plain, lock, unlock, panic button, and that's it. Our center armrest, we do have soft touch with stitching, so I like that. We open that up, and we do have a nice large area for storage. Toyota steering wheel, I have a nice leather wrap wheel, feels good in my hands, nice width, the old school Toyota block lettering on the horn button, round bottom wheel. I have enough room to get in and out of this Land Cruiser, so no problem. We're going to go flat black on the switch gear. On the left side, we're going to have our telephone commands, voice commands, controls for the digital dash, volume. On the right, we're going to have safety suite controls, cruise control, seek for music, modes for the infotainment system. No paddles. On the left stalk, you're going to have your headlight controls, fog lamp controls. Over here on the right, you're going to do your front and rear wiper. And then down over here on the left, we have our push button start right there. Underneath your push button start, you do have your tow haul button down here. And then on the left side, we move across. We can do our adaptive high beams on off. This run right here, that's your parking support brake on or off. Then you have your uh, bright and dim the dash, turn on or off that 120 volt AC in the back, and then we have the fuel filler door pop, disconnect your trailer right there, and then down below you can pop the hood. We do have a manual tilting and telescoping wheel, so Toyota has you covered there, and then 
here we go. Here is our digital dash, looking good. Let's check out our drive modes now. We have Eco, Normal, and Sport. So that's it. We leave it in more normal, let's say. And now when we hit our tow haul button, it just comes up tow haul in green. And that's about it. So there you have it on the drive modes. And then if you want to go through additional information, just like any other Toyota, everything is right in the middle for you. And you can just toggle through. You want to get to your tire pressures, you come on over to the car, and then you go to the right. And that's going to get you eventually to your tire pressures. There they are. So they got you all set. And then we can go back up and we're good to go. Overhead console, nice and big. If you want your LED dome lighting to come on and off and do it when you close the door, this button remains pushed in with the green light on. You open the door, lighting comes on, close the door, lighting will dim out. We do have our SOS button in case there's an emergency on the road. We do have a framed rear view mirror with auto dim and your home link. Here is the optional dash cam that they installed in this vehicle. And then we have our sun visor with vanity and a light. And does it slide? No, but you do have an extension. All right, getting in the back seat of this Land Cruiser, we can just hop right on in. I have the seat set for my driving position, and I'm in. Nice flat roof, plenty of room for my head. I got my heat and air vents up here in the roof on either side, which I like. And now I got plenty of room for my head, shoulders, and knees at 5 foot 11. We do have cloth all the way down. We have a seat pocket behind the driver and the front passenger. And then we have right up here, we have a nice area, command center action, where it says Land Cruiser on top. You got rear climate control, which I have set on auto right now. Plus, you have a 12 volt and two USB-Cs for your rear seat passengers. So they got you covered there. Rear door panel, same action as the front. It's all hard black plastic, including the armrest. Now we take a look at our seats. Again, the black cloth, just like the front but they do feel pretty good. It's a nice woven feel, so they don't feel inexpensive. And I guess they decided to go with this back to basics look to go with the cloth. But let me know what you think about that. And then we have our armrest, nice and soft, two cup holders. So overall, it's quite comfortable back here in the back row. Getting in the tailgate area of your Land Cruiser, you can do it two ways. You can either pop the glass or bring up the whole tailgate. But if you don't need the whole tailgate open, just come up to the back. There's a button right here on the left side of the rear window. Hit the button, you hear it pop, up it comes, and then you can deposit something or take something out and you're good to go. And then close her back on up and you're all set. Now, if you do need to open up the whole tailgate, it is a manual tailgate. You hit the button underneath the Owen Toyota and then you got to lift up. And it is substantial as far as weight, so be prepared for that. But with the rear seats up, we're looking at 37.5 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this Land Cruiser. And the spare tire is underneath the rear bumper of the vehicle. So you got the spare. So thank you, Toyota, for the spare. Now, what do we have here in the back? Well, we do have a home power source right here. So they got you set there. We have the all-season Land Cruiser floor mat open up this we have an area for storage right here and we have a similar panel that you can open right behind the rear seats for more storage as well and i'll show you that when we go ahead and put the rear seats down but we do also have usb c's right here in the back and cup holders to get the rear seats down we have to go to the side of the vehicle open it up and now there is a button right here, a lever, and you hit it, hold it, and up it comes, just like that. Now, if you want to get access to that other panel, I'm going to crawl in the back and give you an idea. The other panel is right here, and you can lift it up, and you can store stuff right there as well. And then, of course... To get the other side down, we just come to the other side and we can do the same thing. And now, as we come to the back, we got more room for additional items if you so choose. 
All right, for the first time, the window sticker for the 24 Land Cruiser 1958. Here it is. No safety ratings yet. Here's our fuel economy out of this iForce Max engine. That's not too bad for a heavy vehicle. Land Cruiser's over 5,000 pound curb weight. Standard equipment. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 with pre-collision. Good move. Options. Let me know you, what you would take off of this list. There's probably a lot I would take off. Total vehicle MSRP from the factory. Vehicle made in Japan. Let's take this baby out for a spin. All right, so we're out on the road in this 24 Land Cruiser 1958 edition action. And we got great visibility out the windshield, side view mirrors, side glass, rear window, no problem. Blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, a pre collision, all that safety in this Land Cruiser. Good deal. The suspension really well damped, very smooth going down the road. Steering feel very nice. Now we are in sport mode right now, but the steering feels good. Uh, the, it's not vague. It's pretty responsive when you turn the vehicle. It turns exactly where you want it to go. So I like the fact that they've eliminated any kind of vagueness in the steering. And this iForce Max has got power. You can feel it when you step on the gas which again, I like, because the worst thing they could have done with this is make it underpowered. And this iForce Max, the torque in here, you can really feel it getting the vehicle up to speed. And that's why they have that start in second button. Because if you are setting this up for off-road, let's say, and you're trying to get out of a situation and you don't want that torque to spin the wheels too quickly, you can hit that button to start out in second gear and give yourself a better chance to get through an obstacle, get through the mud a little bit easier for you. But this one is set up for road use because we have the all-season tires. Now the 1958 edition, like I mentioned earlier, it's Toyota's calling it a back to basics homage to the FJ25, which is the original. And so I can understand with that kind of vibe that they want to get, I can understand we got cloth seats and we got plastic on the doors because it's supposed to be a back to basics vibe in this vehicle, an old school vibe in the vehicle, which I get but it's 61 grand and that's a lot of money for a vehicle this size. So let me know what you guys think about the ethos of this and about the pricing of this uh, vehicle. Now this one of course has a lot of options on it that I probably wouldn't even need to put on if I was buying one myself. So let me know what you think you would need and what you would take off. Maybe we can get this thing down into the $57,000, $58,000 range. And then would this 1958 edition be more attractive to you? Let me know that in the comments as well. But we're going to make the turn. We're going to check out the brakes. Nice and straight. Now we're going to feather in the gas because we have a new engine. But this torque is crazy good. Down the road we go, no problem. Gets it right up to speed very nicely. Now we'll come down the road. Take this left turn. Ease on the brakes. And it wallows like crazy. So this is not going to be anything you want to go around turns in too fast. Or else you're going to have a problem. That's for sure. But driving dynamics, it feels good. It feels like it's accomplishing what Toyota wants to accomplish because one of their biggest mistakes, I thought, was taking the Land Cruiser out of the US market a couple of years ago. And the only way you could really get one was to buy a uber expensive Lexus LX. Uh, so I like the fact that they've introduced it back into the market in 24 and then in the United States 
and I like the fact that it's smaller and they're leaving the Sequoia as the biggest one and they have this one as a bit smaller but now Toyota has a bazillion SUVs I don't know if they need all of those I mean right now if I remember right they got the Venza or excuse me they got the Corolla Cross they got the Venza they got the Crown Signia coming right they got the Highlander they got the Grand Highlander they got the this Forerunner uh, they got this Land Cruiser. They got the Sequoia. That's like eight SUVs. I think that might be too much. Now, here we go. Turning radius is 20 feet, which is pretty wide. So here we go. We're going to zip around. This road is fairly wide, and we get around there. But 20 feet is a bit wide. Here we go. Full circle is 40, obviously, for turning radius is 20. And here we go. He's in the gas. really gets up to speed nicely but one thing you're going to notice I'll shut up for a second if you can hear that we do have some wind noise but a lot of that has to do with the roof rack up there the roof rack is like a brick going through the air and what I can hear in wind noise a little bit's coming from the windshield most of it's coming from that roof rack so overall I think they did a really good job sound deadening this Land Cruiser Be careful on these turns, baby. Especially if it's wet out, you're going to slide around. But let me know, is this reintroduction of the Land Cruiser here in 2024, is this 1958 edition the, the vibe you would want? Is the Land Cruiser the SUV you want to rock down the road in? Or are you going to go somewhere else within the Toyota lineup for something different? Or go to somebody else instead, another brand? Let me know that in the comments as well. But I do want to thank Team Toyota of Princeton for allowing the channel access to their very first 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser 1958 edition for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.